cruise ship passengers take to the seas for the sun, the sights, the gourmet food, luxury and entertainment. But in some cases, they get a lot more than they bargained for and not in a good way. Yet the cruise industry's profits are sailing along smoothly. Rochelle Akufo has more. Disease outbreaks and mechanical failures have put the cruise industry under scrutiny. Carnival Cruise Lines is one of several companies facing class action lawsuits. An engine room fire left the ship adrift for days off the coast of Mexico last year without air conditioning, working toilets or cooked food. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible having to smell, you know, other people's the urine, seeing the feces walking down the halls. You would step on the ground and the carpet and your feet were like sinking in because it was so wet. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, more than 100 passengers of Royal Caribbean's Grandeur of the Seas were overcome with bouts of vomiting and diarrhea in the last two months. In a statement, the cruise liner linked the illnesses to norovirus. When the ill-fated Costa Concordia ship was steered into the rocks in Tuscany back in 2012, 32 passengers drowned, while the captain abandoned the ship. There's also congressional scrutiny as cruise lines are largely able to dodge paying U.S. taxes by registering their companies and ships overseas, in some cases paying just 1.3 percent on their profits. While these incidents would be a public relations nightmare for most sectors, the cruise industry is handling the rough seas rather well. According to Cruise Market Watch, people were still willing to spend money for cruises even during the financial crisis in 2008. And that trend shows no signs of slowing down. Around 21 billion passengers booked cruises last year, and an estimated 24 billion are expected in 2018. Cruise lines are planning to launch another 16 ships in the next two years to keep up with demand, and Asia appears to be a key market. Royal Caribbean's Quantum of the Seas cruise ship will make its home in China in 2015, sailing from Shanghai to South Korea and Japan. This is in addition to two ships the company already has in Asia, sailing to destinations like Kuala Lumpur, Singapore, Tokyo and Hong Kong. The United Nations estimates that Chinese spending on international tourism jumped 40 percent to $102 billion in 2012. But the Asian market as a whole only accounted for a small percentage of cruise line passengers. Reasonable prices and repeat customers have been the recipe for success so far, according to industry analysts. And expanding to Asia's growing middle-class travelers could send profits sailing faster. Rochelle Akufo, CCTV.